Today I'm going to talk a um, uh, spe special topic of the, um, uh, for the lecture of, um, uh, about prints. And this topic is um, some of the talk, uh, one of the talk I gave um, to uh, some other audience. But I think this is a very interesting topic, maybe uh, will be useful for you. And, but um, in the beginning, I have to uh, admit this is not a very scientific finding or um, any uh, of a very serious uh, value about um, the, the content. But it's more like um, uh, experience from life and uh, uh, also from the, the Chinese culture uh, in our surroundings. And especially for those um, uh, not come from um, uh, Chinese culture uh, countries or from Taiwan, and you will find you might find this lecture um, very interesting and uh, will be have a different insight uh, for you to go to the, uh, for example, the markets and to, to buy some food and some drinks and uh, you will maybe have, you will have some second thoughts about uh, the plants itself. To talk about yin and yang, um, that is, uh, it will give you a feeling about the the Taoism and um, for um, the philosophical thinking, but in fact, it's really um, a part of our um, life and, and, and our culture, not only for uh, literature or uh, some of the thinking, but it also affects uh, how we deal with those food or uh, uh, our, our daily life. And for the concept of uh, yang and yin, it's uh, generally um, uh, kind of subconsciously uh, exist in, in our uh, in, in our mind, and so yang uh, usually will mean um, uh, front outside is moving and up or warmer or hot, in compared to yin, uh, which usually means uh, on the back or inside or something or uh, sit still compared to, uh, about moving and or down or cold. So um, for uh, yang and yin, it's basically, you can see it's a kind of opposite effect on, on two different sides. And so uh, for some of the effect, you have uh, yang effect and some of that is yin. And in the ph philosophy, um, basically the extreme of yang would generate yin, and the extreme of yin would generate yang, and that is uh, some kind of a philosophical thinking, but I'm not going to go into that that part because it's a little bit too far from um, the, the thing I'm, I, I would like to introduce about. But anyway, uh, in any sense, um, this concept of yang and yin uh, also uh, corresponding to our surroundings. And for example, and uh, in the philosophical thinking uh, in general, um, we, uh, well, in Chinese culture, and the, the component of everything on Earth can be categorized into five different um, uh, components. Uh, the wood, the fire, the earth, the, uh, the metal, and the water. So this um, is the basic cons cons uh, component. You can see that's the basic material, the, the property of the material for everything. But um, for these five major com uh, elements and they have both yin and yang effect on many things, and it can corresponding to um, our our own body about these five different components. And for um, for these five components, it's in general, generally speaking, in Chinese medicine, uh, in in particular, they are um, the element corresponding to one of the uh, the organ uh, inside our body. Like the, the fire is corresponding to hot, uh, heart, and the earth corresponding to spring, and the, the metal uh, corresponding to lung, the water corresponding to kidney, and the wood corresponding to liver. Uh, but that's for the in interior side. It's uh, well, it's, uh, it's it's the concept for um, uh, for um, how it's corresponding uh, in one part, but. In other way, uh, it also corresponding to the external part. This is uh, the yang side of the, uh, um, the, the our interior. So, for example, for um, the, the fire, not only corresponding to the heart, uh, but also corresponding to the small intestine. And 
uh, the small intestine will be considered as the uh, the young side, the external side of it of the heart, and um, uh, to be honest, I'm not that uh, familiar with the theoretical uh, foundation for why is that, but this is uh, how we usually uh, consider uh, about that. And so um, in some cases, uh, for example, uh, when uh, somebody have a liver problem, uh, so, uh, and we'll probably consider, okay, this, uh, you, you um, probably have a wood element deficient in your body. But what does that mean? I, I'm, I'm not an expert on, on, on that particularly. But we do have uh, this kind of feeling, and some uh, elder people do tell us, okay, you need to um, uh, furnish your, um, your water uh, because you have uh, some uh, kidney problem or something like that. And this is an uh, um, uh, interesting concept, but, um, uh, but I, I probably will um, deep leave the complex part um, on site. Uh, we are focused on probably more general and more, um, more uh, particular on, on plants. Uh, in, in that sense. Aside from um, those, uh, those complicated fire element uh, component uh, philosophy, uh, now I'm going to, uh, to uh, let, let you know some of the very simple uh, things in, your, in our body, that is uh, the heart and the, the cold side. And uh, I want um, all the students can uh, take a look of, uh, uh, of your uh, neighboring students' uh, tongue, and and you just uh, and to see uh, what is the the color and the um, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the characters for your tongue, and you can also um, look at it you know, from the mirror, of course, and um, based on the uh, the color and some of the uh, uh, scratch uh, uh, on the surface of the the tongue. You can uh, roughly um, uh, tell you uh, what is your problem uh, of in, inside your body, but um, for example, um, in um, in this uh, slide, uh, showing some of the different patterns of the the thumb. Uh, in normal uh, thumb, it's on the left uh, uh, upper left, and you don't really see some of the discoloration of of, of the tongue on the surface, and usually there's um, uh, smooth in a sense, not really rough. And so uh, when you have some qi deficient, qi is uh, one of the concepts, it's, uh, um, uh, it's kind of an energy or the force inside your body. And if you have a qi deficient, uh, so uh, your tongue in the middle, you'll probably find some of the whiteness, and uh, which means that you are not that healthy. And, and um, there are some other um, uh, patterns here, but I, I want you to focus on two things um, on the bottom. That one is yang deficient, and the other is yin deficient. So um, yang deficient means you have too much yin. So uh, you, it means that you have a really cold body, in a sense. So those kind of people will find um, uh, your, uh, your hands or your feet, uh, it's very easy to get, uh, get cold or Get, oh, it's, it's kind of chilly. So if you hold somebody's hand, uh, you will find someone um, as o always have cold hands. And that means, usually that means that this body is uh, kind of a, a over in or the yang deficient uh, body. So for this kind of person, you need to um, uh, nourish or um, tonifying yang. And so you to increase the yang for those kind of person. And usually that happens for, for female. And um, I know some of the girls, and they um, usually kind of easy to get cold. They they want to put up a lot of uh, growth and then do uh, over scar uh, because of that. And so, um, in some case, uh, you will find somebody will have the ink deficient. So you have um, uh, the very reddish uh, tongue, and not only the reddish, and also you will find some. In many cases, you will find. It's um, uh, very, those kind of people were very easy to get hot and they uh, only wear t-shirts all the time and doesn't matter if it's, it's, uh, the weather is cold or not. So um, uh, we call this, this kind of person is kind of hot body, has a hot body and 
um, usually generate a lot of uh, overheating uh, themselves. So for those kind of person, uh, the best treatment would probably um, try to lower down the body temperature uh, in a sense, not, not exactly for um, the, uh, the temperature you can measure, but uh, for, uh, to increase the yin and decrease the yang for those kind of person. So we will find some, some, uh, some food or some drinks and they can reduce your internal heat. So now we have some of the very basic concepts. So, um, uh, and this concept actually come from um, not only ch uh, Chinese medicine, but also they also, this kind of concept exists in many other countries uh, within Asia. So this is a picture showing um, some of those uh, so-called authentic or traditional me medicine uh, medical use. And in, um, in China, of course, we call it the uh, uh, Zhongyi, the traditional Chinese medicine. But at the same at the same time, uh, in in Korea, you will find uh, the word hangu, and that also means uh, some of the medicinal use of the uh, the herbs and, and and some of the treatment. And in um, in Japan, uh, you will find uh, kanpo, that's a uh, hanfang, that's in, in in Japanese. And in Vietnam, you will, you will find dong yi, and that it's actually. Um, translated from Zhong Yi, and uh, all, of those, all of those um, um are already modified um, uh, form of the Chinese medicine. And we believe that those kind of uh, um, medicinal use are originally from um, China region, but uh, it has been adapted to some of the local um, uh, uh, medicinal use. And uh, for example, because um, the, the plants you cannot find in Korea and Japan and compared to China and uh, in Vietnam you'll probably not find the same thing uh, in, in China because it's more tropical region so they will use some of the alternative uh, herb um, uh, for the same uh, treatment and so this this reasonable so we can see some of the uh, modified um, uh, form for the uh, Chinese Chine, uh, traditional Chinese medicine but I think we all agree that um, this is still under a very general picture about the traditional Chinese medicine. And those Chinese me me medicine um, are usually can date it back to uh, roughly uh, the second century, um, uh, f uh, the very early days uh, for um, uh, of the uh, medicinal use of the plants, that's a Shennong Ben Cao. And although there are some, some uh, saying that it's uh, all written by Shen Nong Shi, one of the uh, major goddess um, uh, in uh, Chinese um, legends. Uh, but many people think uh, that Shen Nong Ben Cao actually combines several different um, early uses, uh, but not only written by only a single person. But in, in any way, um, in this book, and there are about two, over 250 species of plants uh, or described, and also uh, the uses and uh, some of the ma major com uh, char uh, characteristics about the plants already be um, um, written. And uh, for several centuries, there are some other um, um, literature like Ben Cao Jing Ji Zhu, or um, Tang Ben Cao uh, in Tang Dynasty. And there are several smaller uh, literature um, uh, only add some of the new, some of the few um, plant species on, on the book. But uh, one of the major um, literatures uh, in Chinese medicine was uh, written uh, in uh, 1578 by uh, Li Shizhen. And uh, the book Ben Cao Gang Mu is kind of like a Bible for uh, Chinese medicine, and uh, it includes um, um, over a thousand plant species uh, used in, in plant, um, uh, of plants for uh, Chinese medicine use. But also it includes several other non-plants as well, like um, some of the animals and or some of the, uh, the rocks and the mineral as well. So let's back, get back to the plants. And um, for um, the plants or uh, 
if we call it um, uh, for medicinal use, sometimes we just call them uh, the Chinese herbs. And uh, it can uh, basically categorize into four different uh, kind of um, characteristics. We call the four xing, si xing. And that is the, the cold and the cool, the warm and hot, and also the neutral, the, which without the, the cold or hot. And on, on the colder side, you will um, toward the yin, and the, the hotter side will co toward the yang. So, uh, so in general, uh, you, you can categorize all the plants into this um, well, four, uh, four xing, or f actually five different categories and to, to toward yang or toward yin. And because of these properties, and you can use these, uh, the plants for different treatment. We, uh, we already talked about uh, if you have yang deficient, you, prob you, you will need some of the yin um, medicine. And uh, if you are uh, yin deficient, you will need some of the yang medicine. So that is uh, uh, the basic concept. And uh, but besides that, uh, we also all the plants also have these uh, the five flavors, uh, and um, and also have different effects, and these five flavors are, are in um, uh, coordinated with uh, the the four xing uh, we just mentioned. So it could be uh, a different combinations, and the five different flavors um, are pungent, sweet, sour, bitter, and salty, and pungent uh, in Chinese is gan. Uh, it's a kind of concept very similar to, to sweet, but it's a little bit different. And um, it's uh, the uh, the major uh, characteristics is to um, vitalizing or to activating the blood, and um, so this uh, the the first effect. And uh, the sweet is to tonifying or harmonizing the the different um, components, and sour. Uh, it's a uh, um, astringent or consolidating things, so it's uh, try to uh, to consolidate, <laughs> to concentrate a little bit. And bitter is to dispelling the heat, and so um, uh, so this is kind of concept that um, uh, if you are um, overheated, uh, in a sense, you you uh, want to have some bitter things and to dispel that. And or to detoxifying, and if you have a uh, uh, sometimes this toxic is, is not a real toxic, but we kind of disassociate those uh, the bad things. And for the salt, uh, salty, it's uh, try to softening or to pungent things. So basically, you you can uh, see these five flavors are not the actual flavors you can test, although it's um, corresponding to some of the, the sweet, sour, bitter. But in uh, in the Chinese medicine uh, no term, that is uh, have a different meaning from um, the uh, the very simple um, uh, um, uh, the the word uh, for uh, the meaning of the word. So now we know um, the Chinese herb have uh, the, the the different um, uh, characteristics um, for. Uh, the cold and hot, and so we can categorize those Chinese medicine according to that. So, if uh, some of the medicine they can uh, nourish or uh, increase the yang and or increase the yin, will different uh, will put on the different categories. But some of the Chinese medicine um, are not only to um, to uh, nourish uh, the yang and yin, but to tonifying qi. So that's a kind of general term. Try to um, uh, to to increase the uh, the strength of your internal body and it's kind of a um, I don't know if that's a good comparison but you can uh, try to imagine that oh, okay all the all your immune system um, uh, was really getting stronger and uh, that's that's a chi and it's kind of a really interesting concept and so some of the medicine are trying to tonify chi uh, which means to Nourish to to increase um, the the qi. So because some people they are uh, um, are lacking the qi, so you are very easy to get tired and um, uh, uh, not have the uh, the strength to do a lot of things. And because you have uh, have weak uh, in your qi, 
And so for um for example, there's um like Jing Shen, uh Ren Shen, uh Shou Wu, Shou Wu uh, of the Wolf Fairy. We are going to talk uh, a little bit about that. And those things are a kind of a general um uh, component to increase or um, to tonifying your qi. And um, in the same concept, you will have some of the medicine can tonify yang or tonify yin that is, uh, have different properties. And, but some of them um, uh, have a different property to, like, uh, to resolving stasis. That, um, wh that, that is a concept to, um, to activate uh, your uh, blood flow and because in, for example, if you um, uh, sit in the office for a really long time and uh, or lying down in, in uh, on a bed for a really long time, you you feel you don't have um, uh, your blood is not moving well inside your body. So uh, in that case, you can of course you can use exercise uh, in order to uh, to increase the flow and to um, to activate um, that. And but also you can also use the medicine to to increase the effect. Um, because sometimes it's not just exercise can do that, but uh, or also uh, you cannot exercise because um, because you you broke your leg and um, but you want to have your blood uh, moving inside the legs and so you can use some medicine to increase the effect and some other uh, medicine can uh, clean the heat and to um, uh, or tonify the blood and to 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 um uh to make your blood more healthy and so there there are different effects for for those Chinese medicine and so the uh, in the following I'm going to um introduce some of the plants have this uh, uh or uh, and very generally uh, commonly used in our um uh Chinese medicine and some sometimes it's just putting in the food actually. The first I'm going to introduce is Ren Shen, and of course this is probably one of the most famous uh, 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 Chinese medicine, and it has a very general effect on tonifying qi. It's a, a member of uh, Aradia family, and this is a plant uh, in the picture, and it has uh, um, a reddish fruit, and uh, the flower is white actually. And the part um, we, um, we use for medicine is uh, the root of the plant, and it can it, it contains the the ginsenoside and which is thing is a major component for uh, the the active component, and it uh, has been used um, as an adaptogen and uh, this is a, a, a very interesting term to um, for a, an adaptogen is uh, the thing you can strengthen uh, and increase your chi so um, uh, to make you feel better or stronger and so this is uh, one of the major adaptogen um, uh, we have been used for uh, a long time and of course um, uh, as many of the uh, of you already um, probably already know ginseng is uh, uh, very famous from Korea and, and also the uh, northeastern China and uh, so you, you it gives you a feeling that okay, ginseng is um, uh, is growing in those colder region, and which is true. And so, in many cases, you have to go to the um, deep mountains in the uh, in, in in that area and to to find um, uh, ginseng. And in North America, you can also find that uh, uh, different um, um, very similar species. Um, but of course, the the people will claim uh, they have a different. Uh, characteristic or properties for uh, the medicinal use. And the next I'm going to talk about is He Shou Wu, and um, sometimes it's called Shou Wu, and that means that you can make your hair um, uh, black. So um, uh, that is uh, one of the uh, a, a legend that I say uh, one of the people was, uh, the last name is Ho, and uh, he is a uh, He's pretty old, but he still have a, 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 a um, black hair. But uh, so people ask, oh, okay, what happened? Um, you uh, you don't have gray hair, and he will say, okay, I just eat this uh, uh, some of the herbs I collect this from from the field, and and so the so the people knows uh, uh, this particular plant um, can have this particular use for um, 
rejuvenate the body and to keep you young. And so, uh, me, and so some of the uh, uh, the f um, uh, the this uh, uh, treatment um, are use this um, to um, to try to um, make you younger in a sense, but nobody can actually test that. And uh, um, and and this is uh, uh, also uh, one of the component for some of the shampoo because it's a. Uh, well, it's probably only for ad advertisement uh, purpose that, uh, okay, I, if you uh, use this shampoo, you will keep your hair um, uh, black. And so this is, uh, but this is, uh, again, it's a kind of the ca uh, common medicine um, used in combination with several others. And next I'm to uh, introduce is the camphor fungus. And um, this camphor fungus is actually um, uh, as uh, part of a, a larger group called Lingzhi, and Lingzhi is probably um, more familiar with many others. But um, this camphor fungus, is, uh, um, I like to talk about it because it's very expensive, um, and it's, it is believed that it has a, a, a stronger and better medicinal use um, uh, compared to um, some of the other counterparts. And this camphor fungus, um, um, uh, the Sunning William uh, and Chodia Camphorata. And it's uh, generally believed to have uh, anti cancer activities. And um, although there are some arguments, but um, many of, uh, including my, some of my friend, uh, friends and family members, they do believe that this is um, a real thing for um, the, the cancer treatment. But um, the bad thing the, is that this, um, the camphor fungus is, um, only grows on the boss camphor tree, which is a rare and endemic species in Taiwan. So because of that, it's, uh, it becomes uh, very tricky and um, uh, it's, uh, it's a rare species of the tree and it, this fungus only grow on the tree. So um, in order to get those camphor fungus, you probably um, will kill those uh, camphor tree. And uh, so this become a, a, a main problem. And because um, in, in, in the general public, it's, um, uh, it has, uh, has a very high demand for the cancer treatment. And it's uh, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the market price is uh, over um, 17,000 uh, per kilometer and for, for uh, the camphor fungus. And that is really, really expensive. And even if, um, if you, um, it's probably even more, ex uh, even so for some of the extracts from this uh, camphor fungus. And, uh, and in a very simple treatment, you probably need to um, spend um, over 150,000 uh, NT dollar for uh, some of the very simple treatment. And, uh, my family uh, actually, um, uh, well, it's a, uh, I have this uh, experience that uh, okay, this is uh, really difficult to, to buy it. But um, uh, in some of the research institute, we are trying to um, culture those camphor fungus, and uh, in order to get those uh, materials, um, but not to destroy the um, the very rare and uh, precious uh, species of, of, of the camphor tree. Here is uh, another example for um, very famous medicine, um, which is also believed to um, have anti-tumor, anti-viral activities. And that is the caterpillar fungus, Dong Chong Xia Cao. And the uh, caterpillar fungus are actually um, a result of a, a, a re relationship between the fungus, uh, cordyceps, um, and the larva of the ghost moth, and um, actually the fungus um, parasites on, on, on the ghost moth caterpillar. And um, uh, after a certain period, um, the fungus will um, kill uh, the caterpillar and uh, grows out and have the spores. Uh, and the, in this particular case for the caterpillar fungus, it's um, uh, only leaves uh, on the Tibet part two, and um, it's uh, in the Tibet to Qinghai area. And there you can see a lot of local people uh, try to collect the, um, um, the caterpillar fungus and to sell to the market because it uh, also has a very high demand on, on, on the market as well. 
And uh, the, in general um, speaking, uh, caterpillar fungus uh, are to nourish young. And so that's uh, for the ink deficiency treatment uh, in general. And can tonify in lung and, and it's uh, a really famous uh, Chinese medicine. And it's uh, um, because of the high demand, um, you, in the local area in, in Tibet and in Qinghai, you will see um, that is the, um, almost the only and major economical source for the local people. So there's uh, a lot of people just going there and this is basically, that's how they make the living and for, for, for all. And you can see the picture on the, uh, uh, for this uh, caterpillar fungus and, um, and in this case, uh, many people um, already, uh, there was some uh, proof, scientific proof that in other areas for the caterpillar fungus, uh, a different species of this fungus do not have the same effect. So that's why they need, really need to collect those things um, uh, over there because you, you probably cannot, uh, well, even now it's very hard to cultivate those caterpillars and also the fungus uh, in a laboratory or in an artificial environment. And that is, uh, and, but this caterpillar fungus um, uh, on the market, the, the price on the market or, um, is uh, really um, fluctuated and only this uh, particular case from uh, Tibet Pra 2 have the highest price. The others, even though um, sometimes some, some brands um, uh, are expensive, but many people think they do not have this uh, anti-tumor or antiviral activities at all. So in addition to um, uh, Dong Chong Xia Cao, the, uh, the caterpillar uh, fungus can tonify yang, there are several other herbs can also have a similar effect. And here are some of the examples. And on the left, that is, um, uh, we call it Suo Yang. That's uh, the scientific name is uh, Cinnamorian uh, Songarican. And it is um, a parasitic plant. Uh, it's only grow on some of the uh, desert area, a very, very dry area. And um, those, uh, uh, this kind of medicine, it's uh, not only to say to tonify young, but it's to invigorate um, the kidney, and which means that uh, it can um, increase the, the male power. <laughs> and um, so uh, that is uh, to tonify young in, 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 in that sense. So uh, in addition to the Suo Yang, and there are uh, another plants called Ying Yang Huo, which also have the similar effects. And it's, uh, um, uh, it's, it's in the uh, Barbridesi family and the pictures uh, here. And the active ingredient is, uh, is already known is uh, in Karen and which will um, uh, uh, increase the male sexual ability uh, in, in the believing. And I never tried that, so I cannot tell you if that's true or not. So um, let's get back to uh, some of the normal things aside from those uh, the, to increase the sexual abilities. And um, there are several um, famous herbs uh, uh, believed to tonify yang. And one is uh, Du Zhong. And Du Zhong is, uh, uh, is, is actually a, a not a common plant, and, but it's uh, only found in, in, in China, uh, Eucomia, uh, Amono, Amoides. And um, uh, the, the parts f we collect for medicinal use is, is the bark of, of the tree. So we just um, uh, cut out uh, the barks and, and dry it. And um, uh, we want to um, use as a medicine we can uh, uh, put into the boiled water and um, drink the, the water, but not eat the bark. Um, I don't think you can really eat the bark. And, um, but on the market, you can uh, find some of the tea. It's uh, commercially made from Du Zhong, and this is uh, the Du Zhong tea. And uh, you call me a tea. It's, um, uh, it's uh, well, it, the advertisement say it's uh, popular uh, for the reducing the weight. So it's kind of popular among the females. And again, I have no idea if that's true or not. 
Now we go to um, the plants that can tonify in, and so um, which means uh, you can reduce your your heat in a sense or increase the the in power uh, for your body. And this is the plant we uh, commonly use. That's um, a Solomon seal or called uh, Huang Jing, and or called a tiger stranger. And um, uh, this is from the Lily family. Um, it is said to um, uh, the plants can nourish the spring and also the lawn, and to have uh, anti-aging features. So this is uh, one of the the most popular um, uh, herb component among the females. Okay, you can tonify in, you can anti-aging. Wow, uh, well, who can uh, be that? And um, so. And this is uh, uh, one of the legendary um, uh, herb in, in uh, some of the Chinese uh, um, st stories. And um, uh, it, it is said that it's, uh, um, in, in some area, and uh, there were some, some uh, people, they uh, cannot find any food to eat, but um, because they can find uh, Huang Jing uh, on the mountain. And so uh, those people who can find a Huang Jing can only eat Huang Jing and do not need to eat any rice or noodle or something else and they can survive for maybe uh, a month or so. So this is uh, one of the maybe, uh, interesting plants and uh, uh, maybe that's true but again I never tried that so I cannot tell if that's true. Next um, I'm going to um, talk about uh, wolfberry and um, lichen, barbarian or in, in Chinese gou qi or in, uh, in Taiwanese, Goki. And this is uh, one of the very um, common uh, components in Chinese medicine. And it can be used in combination with some others and or um, use that uh, uh, itself as a, a, a tea component. And uh, it is traditionally used uh, in um, uh, cardi uh, cardiovascular and uh, vision related disease. So it is said the wolfberry can um, uh, help your vision, the eyes. So if you have some uh, eye problem, it's very easy to dry or something like that. It's um, many uh, Chinese medicine or uh, the doctor will uh, uh, suggest you drink the wolfberry tea and because it can make your eyes brighter or uh, healthier. And so, and some people also claim uh, they have uh, the anti-cancer activities and um, uh, that is, uh, so it is uh, right now is very commonly used. And um, uh, for example, um, if you use it in combination with others, you can, um, you can drink it uh, yourself with the boiling water, but you can also um, put up uh, some of the other herbs like the green sensen and um, in, in, in or the cysigen as a, 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 a inside the tea and it is, very um, popular um, um, in, in the daily use. Uh, wolfberry um, is so popular and it is uh, uh, very widely cultivated in China and for over 2 million acres uh, um, in, in China uh, in all. So you, you will find some area that is uh, growing uh, the wolfberry on the whole mountain uh, hill. And it is one of the, the many recognized super fruit um, uh, uh, in, in China. And it is uh, really common. And many of the, um, uh, the, uh, the wolfberry, the dried wolfberry uh, we can find in, in Taiwan's market are uh, actually um, uh, from made in China nowadays. For other herbs, they can um, have these hot and warm properties and including several others like um, in, in theater, uh, the Fang Feng, and that is uh, have um, a, a little bit pungent taste and is considered to have the warm property. Um, because of this uh, property is usually to, um, uh, for the treatment for, the, for your cold uh, symptoms. And uh, the word uh, Fang Feng in, in Chinese is uh, kind of uh, prevent uh, the wing and that, that is uh, to prevent you from the cold um, in, in that. So this, this is actually you can um, uh, really understand um, 
how uh, the, the property and also the uses uh, just from the, the Chinese characters. This is one of the examples for that. In comparison, there are some drinks uh, we um, have this cold property. Um, they can uh, reduce the heat. It's commonly used. You can drink uh, with usually without any um, side effects. And the commonly drink things is the mint. Um, it has a pungent and cold property, and it can promote sweating or release the exterior. And so I, I think um, you, you kind of uh, get this feeling because uh, once you uh, smell the mint and or drink the mint tea, you will have the refreshing uh, uh, feeling. And that's OK. You will feel cool um, in, um, in, in that. Uh, so this is uh, very commonly uh, to understand. And this has a very cold property. And so because of that, uh, if you have a, um, a cold or cool body, um, that's uh, you have you are a cold person, then you shouldn't drink mint tea, uh, uh, because you are, uh, because you already have too much in, and you are tonifying in, and and you will have some problem, uh, to balance uh, your your own interiors. Here is um, another uh, medicine which uh, uh, are um, used as um, to tonify the blood and to um, increase your blood flow. Um, we just uh, mentioned that a little bit. That is uh, uh, one of the famous things to use is Di Huang. And uh, Di Huang can be prepared on two different ways. And one is the raw Di Huang or the processed Di Huang. And the processed Di Huang, uh, you have uh, <coughs> to dry in a heat. And so it kind of consolidate um, the material a little bit more. And, and the raw Di Huang um, is, uh, can be used to reduce the heat and to treat um, the ink deficiency. And the process Di Huang is, kind of, uh, is very uh, concentrated in that. And, um, and is, uh, um, again, is to um, enrich the ink in your body. And there are some of the uh, active ingredients already being identified. Um, it's a uh, remedial site and uh, um, ocupin already know. And that is uh, the flower is, uh, is, is, is quite beautiful. Now I have uh, introduced some of the properties of the plants. And you, I think you can get some idea about the, your, the yin and yang of your body, and also the yin and yang for the, for the plants and for the medicine. And, but in fact, this is a very um, uh, general, very basic concept, but it's not how uh, the Chinese medicine work or the, uh, the, um, the principle of how it works. Although it is, uh, you can make it a very simple way. It's, it's, trying to, it's just trying to balance the, uh, your own body. But um, in the, uh, the, the major differences between the Chinese medicine uh, and also the Western medicine, um, uh, the, the pills and drugs we use, um, if we compare that, the major differences are, are uh, in Western medicine, we, if we are taking a drug, we are um, trying to treat the disease or to, to kill the pathogen. And that is uh, the concept about the uh, Western um, uh, medicine, well, in general. And, but for Chinese med um, medical treatment, we are treating the body, and we are trying to make you healthier, but not to treat the disease. That, that is the differences. So, um, so, uh, so the Chinese medicine is trying to help your body to regain the balance and to be healthier again. And um, because of that, the disease will be gone. And so this, I think this is the, the, the basic difference between the, the Chinese medicine and, and the Western medicine and how we treat it. And so um, for the same disease or the same symptom, different person uh, uh, will be treated differently uh, according to the Chinese um, medical doctor, and because the, the medical doctor will will um, will see the patient and based on the the patient and give you a, a different medicine to use, and that is really different because um, uh, if we um, go to a doctor in um, Western country, 
will, okay, I have a cold or I have a blah, blah, blah disease. Uh, they will probably give you the exactly the same medicine because it's under the standard because uh, you can use this medicine to treat this disease. Um, but for the Chinese medicine, um, uh, the Chinese medical doctor, they will um, uh, to feel your body and to make sure what is your uh, the property of your body and then then decide which medicine to be used and that is uh, the uh, the major differences and and the most complicated part is that um, the, the doctor uh, will have a compound medical medicine to treat you so because you have a, a yin and yang or a, a different property a, a imbalance in your five elements inside your body so the, the, the doctor will try to um, uh, to balance what to use in the medicine um, in order to um, have you to be healthier so this compound medicine I think is the most complicated one and the, the basic principle is to have a major component to treat you and then to have several others to uh, facilitate those medicines uh, to, to have this uh, effect and also try to bring some others um, for for your own body as, uh, as well. And the principles are um, usually um, can be categorized in uh, the four different um, parts, the uh, sovereign, uh, sovereign uh, minister, assistant, and courier. Uh, in Chinese, it will be say, Jun Chen Zuo Shi. That's uh, the basic um, the compound medicine uh, to be used. The sovereign is the principal curative action and is the major component. And the, the minister um, uh, medicine will uh, just to help to strengthen, uh, strengthen the principal action. So that is uh, uh, the mini the, the, uh, how the minister work. And the assistant uh, medicine will be treated as um, uh, for the, uh, the combined syndrome and to to try to reduce or relieve the secondary uh, symptoms is kind of uh, to reduce the side effect in a sense. And the, the curia is uh, to direct action to the uh, affected um, uh, um, material or channel or site that's uh, shi, that is uh, uh, kind of a direction to the certain place to to that the, uh, the the medical treatment to to work so that is um, the basic principle for uh, how how it works and it's kind of complicated it's uh, it really need, need to uh, need a lot of knowledge to do so and again I'm not the expert for that but uh, um, usually we are just trying to um, take some of the uh, uh, already made compound medicine to um, to treat some of the very general things and it is uh, it's in our culture it's a uh, you don't really need to go to a, a Chinese med uh, medical doctor in order to treat everything and in some I will give you some of the examples uh, some of the common um, uh, uh, we don't really call it drugs or s treatment uh, common treatments for for us to use and of course those different combinations is very really complicated and there's uh, also uh, some of the rules for the prohibited combination is called the 18 um, antagonisms or 19 incompatibilities for uh, you cannot mix this uh, with that medicine and um, you can uh, find it some, uh, some on some of the literatures. So uh, in the following slides I'm going to give you some of the examples. We um, uh, we kind of use this um, use for our supplementary um, uh, treatments and you some people um, they take these uh, supplementaries um, not necessarily you have any specific symptom but trying to um, maintain your um, uh, your balance of your body and this is one of the famous uh, um, thing there's a si wu tang there's a four substance soup well, well, you can imagine that well, there are four major components for in this soup, and one is um, um, dang gui, and the other is a uh, uh, Sichuan uh, loya uh, rhizome, uh, chuan chong, and um, uh, on the uh, 
on the upper right, there's a Chinese um, uh, peony, there's Shao Yao, and, uh, and also Di Huang, we already may, uh, introduced that a little bit. So these four components, um, you can use these four components to um, put into the soup, uh, to uh, cook with uh, uh, beef stew or chicken, and uh, you will have the, the effect for um, to balance yourself, to increase uh, your body's strength. And um, it is so popular that um, it, it is now you can it's, uh, commercialize into several smaller packages. You can buy from the market very easily some of the uh, pre-made uh, si wu ying, the, the si wu drink, and or um, uh, some of the uh, uh, even the, the, the kind of tea bag things, and you can just uh, put a tea bag and put a boiled water, and you can have that. And some people uh, will add some other ingredient in this uh, full substance soup, like uh, putting some of the uh, uh, the immature um, uh, papaya, or uh, put up the raspberry, uh, or put up some uh, the the rose. And uh, in many cases. Uh, um, in not only to put up the flavor, but also want to put up some of the uh, um, um, effects. And <laughs> for example, uh, we will probably uh, we have some problem. Uh, well, if you don't know what is what is it, and you will say, why you put immature papaya in this kind of drink? It's what's going on here. And uh, anyway, this uh, the immature papaya is. Uh, um, um, uh, easy to say to increase the, the breast milk um, uh, production. So many of the, the girls or women, um, they will think, okay, this is uh, good stuff and you could have a, a bigger breast. And, um, and also um, the full, full substance drink and is also uh, good for the females. So it has become a kind of popular drinks um, in, 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 um, in Taiwan and many other con Asian countries as well. And next um, is uh, a very famous um, compound formula uh, for um, uh, uh, to treat the uh, the sore throat, and it's Chuan uh, Bei Pi Pa Gao, and um, the major component is the um, uh, Pi Pa, uh, that's the uh, low quality, leaf. and um, it's uh, it is um, already known that uh, it has a cold property and it can suppress the coughing, and so um, uh, but. And because of this uh, has a cold property and, and also another uh, component, uh, the, the fruity dairy, that is also a cold component. And so in this uh, Chuan Bei Pi Pa Gao, um, they will add some of the, uh, the warmer uh, component to kind of balance itself in, in this drink. And um, it is uh, really common. And um, uh, I myself uh, took that. Uh, and even my kids uh, uh, like to drink that because it's really sweet. and. Uh, uh, it's very good for your throat, and um, uh, and to prevent uh, the coughing, and it's popular. Hmm. And next is also a very famous uh, common formula. It's a Zheng Lu Wan Gang, and that is a, a, a commercial drug, and it is to treat the um, the the loose stool and diarrhea, and um, it's a. Uh, um, it's so popular. I think if you are um, living in Taiwan for a really long time, you will probably um, ran across this uh, medicine. And uh, uh, when I was a child, this is an uh, uh, interesting memory because um, it, as, as a child, it's very easy to uh, get a loose stool because we, we add a lot of things and, uh, and carefully. And, um, so um, uh, my parents will bring this medicine and to try to uh, make us uh, have this medicine. And because this is uh, this medicine is kind of smelly, and um, we uh, we call it cao yu wan na, which uh, which in, in, that is uh, Taiwanese means that it's a very bad smelling drug. And um, so it has a very strong impression in my mind. It's but. Uh, based on my own experience, it's quite useful. <laughs> and, uh, once you have this medicine, it's uh, usually yeah, our uh, my diarrhea was uh, same thing will be much much better. And um, 
that I hear um, there are several um, uh, uh, websites you can uh, um, link to. Um, it can have uh, how this medicine was made and, and, and which plants were made from. And so uh, it's quite interesting and I highly encourage you to uh, take a look of these uh, following websites. So here are some of the pictures for uh, the major ingredients from this um, uh, general one. And the, uh, the first is the Gambier, uh, that's from the uh, Rubiaceae family. Uh, it is uh, already known to have an anti-diarrhea uh, property. And um, the next one also has similar, similar um, uh, characteristics, the, uh, the Phytodendron. Uh, the bark of the Phytodendron is already known to have an anti-diarrhea property. And um, you can find some others um, uh, will have uh, the effect for um, kind of a, a gen generalized um, and and to uh, is kind of say to be a ex expectorant is uh, glycoriza and uh, liquorized, and that is uh, very commonly used in Chinese medicine for um, uh, for the pungent um, uh, feeding and to kind of. Uh, uh, balance out, smooth out the, uh, the, the other um, medicines. And the, uh, the citrus peel is used as uh, one of the stomach medicine and also is one of the component in, in this uh, um, general one. So in addition to those um, medicine or it is uh, some of the supplementary um, uh, medicines we use in our uh, culture, and there are also um, the yin and yang uh, you can recognize from our daily food. And this is uh, in some of the uh, Chinese cuisine, uh, we, we will try to um, balance that uh, in, uh, in order to, um, to not to be too cold or too, too hot. And I will give you some of the example later on uh, for, for that. And in this table, um, I will just give you some of the example for uh, the food we use and also the property and for the chili pepper and ginger and I think all of you uh, will very easy to um, understand it's, it's hot and warm property and it's considered to be uh, pungent and and pumpkin is also um, considered to have a warm property and uh, the cabbage is uh, a neutral, and the celery, spinach, and bamboo shoot is considered to be a cold co uh, component. So it has a cold property, and um, uh, the cherry guava has a warm property. The, uh, the, the, the apple is neutral, and the orange is considered to be cool or sour, and the banana is also considered to be cold. So um, in, I think in some of the habits, uh, 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 some, uh, for example, my parents will, or, or my mom will um, uh, will ask me not to eat any tangerine if I have a cold, because it's a, it's a cold property. It's not good for um, for you uh, if you have a cold. But apple is fine because apple is neutral. It's it's, it's actually a very safe um, fruit if you want to um, bring uh, the fruit to the hospital. Uh, I mean, if you have a friend or uh, family um, in the hospital uh, and you don't know what is the best to bring, bring the apple because it's neutral. <laughs> if you bring tangerine, if it's, a, it's a, they are having a cold or something like that, and you will not be good it's, uh, um, to, to the patient. Well, although many of the fruits you bring to the hospital were eaten by not the patient themselves, but the, the families actually. So here I'm going to give you some of the uh, example from our daily drinks. And I really think that uh, the drinks in Taiwan are really diverse in compared to the many countries I've been to. And um, uh, it could be um, through uh, the juice or the tea or uh, some of the combinations. And it's really diverse. And, and I think if you live here for a while, you really understand what, what I'm talking about. And um, uh, this is the, the first example is the watermelon juice. And it is uh, very common in, in summer. Um, it has a cool property. And so uh, during the summer, it's really a, a very nice drink. And not only, uh, well, even if you drink the watermelon juice uh, in room temperature, 
it will still reduce your interior temperature because it has a cool property. And, but of course, we drink, uh, if you drink during the summer, you will be um, putting some ice and, um, to have a stronger effect. The next is uh, the, the mid herb tea, and uh, this is a little bit different from uh, we just mentioned about uh, the mid herb, and that is a little bit different kind of uh, uh, the mid herb. And for this mid herb, it's uh, uh, in Chinese we call it xian cao, and um, we uh, can use uh, it in several different ways. Um, in in summer, we usually um, put into a, a cold um, uh, sweets and um, put into a jelly-like, um, uh, to make it a jelly-like uh, thing, and to eat with some of the, uh, the, the pearl bubble, the, um, or some of the uh, tapioca, and, and others. And in winter, um, you, we can also drink that in hot, uh, or in warm, uh, will be sao xian cao in, in, in that, and, uh, and because it's warm, so um, uh, it will become, it will not become a jelly-like, and but it's uh, when the temperature go, goes down, then it will become a little bit um, sticky uh, um, uh, for the drink. Next is uh, one of my favorite drink. It's Ai Yu, and it is made from um, the seeds of um, uh, one of the fig species in Taiwan. And uh, we call it ai yu. and this is uh, uh, the the fig. Um, fr uh, the, this is actually um, uh, the, the the whole inflorescence and inflorescence for uh, on the picture, and um, the thing we uh, made from are those uh, in the the seeds in in the uh, inside of this uh, the full structure, and we collect those things and um, and and to. Um, uh, and dry it a little bit and uh, collect it. And uh, while well, the picture on the upper right is not in its natural form, it's kind of a, they put put it together. Um, and then uh, we use that uh, to put um, inside uh, a cloth, like the cheese cloth. And then we put in the boiled water and or, or not uh, just cool or c uh, warm water. And we try to squeeze out the uh, very sticky things, and this is kind of a, a gelatin or uh, like uh, thing. And uh, after a while, it will uh, automatically uh, become a jelly like uh, thing um, for the whole pot. And then we just cut it out and then drink with some uh, uh, sweets. And you can put on some uh, sugar or honey if you like. And um, sometimes we will add a little bit. Um, lemon to increase the, uh, the flavor. And this is one of a uh, very popular drink um, during the summertime. And next um, is the star fruit juice. And uh, what star fruit you can use also use uh, it as a, as a fruit. And um, it's originally in tropical Asia and it has a sweet and sour and cold property. And um, it is uh, um, say to, um, to very good for your lung and also for your throat. And um, so it's uh, also a very popular drink to um, to kind of reduce the heat of your body and to um, uh, to smooth out uh, your uh, sore throat. And I think uh, you have to be aware that because it contains the uh, oxalic acid, so um, if someone has this uh, kidney failure, you cannot eat star fruit because it will uh, damage your kidney. And so this is just uh, uh, something um, um, in addition to that. So we have several examples uh, of the drinks to which can promote the coat. And, uh, and, and now I'm going to talk some of the drinks that is uh, to prevent the coat and promoting the heat. So that means that uh, usually those drinks are popular um, to drink in, the, in, in winter or if you have a cold body. And this is a, a famous one, is the ginger tea. And the ginger has a, a, a warm or hot property. So you can drink uh, the, uh, uh, the ginger soup or um, putting ginger with something else like uh, the sweet potato. And um, that is uh, uh, 
it's quite nice to to drink or eat uh, during the winter because it's uh, not only the the temperature uh, to warm you up, but also the pro warm property that can, that can heat you up from the interior. So besides ginger tea, um, there's also um, you can use long gum and red day uh, tea uh, to have the similar effects and uh, to um, to uh, tonify yang and um, to increase the uh, the heat of your body. And uh, so if you here have uh, the the uh, the yang deficiency, you should try to drink that. But if you are a a, a warm or hot body, and then you should not drink too much of this kind of drink because you will uh, heat you up too much and you will have an imbalance uh, uh, because of that. Mm -hmm. So here I would like to give you some uh, other in, um, additional information about this, uh, the yin yang property and so on uh, in the plants. And so those properties, as you can imagine, probably is uh, uh, species specific and some species, some kind of uh, trends, they have this property. Sometimes uh, they are not. But it is not um, to say that uh, in the, the same family of the plants, they all have the very similar property. property. It's not that. And so um, this is uh, one of the examples from the bean family, the legumes. And for um, the mung bean and the bean sprout, or tofu, or uh, ure, and they are considered to have the cold or cool property. So the tofu or douhua, they are all considered as a, um, the, has a cold property. So, um, but uh, the soybean and the bro bean or the soy milk, may uh, uh, soy bean, of course, and they are neutral. So compared to the, the cold um, property um, for other legumes. And um, so uh, it basically it has uh, a different, um, it can have different property within the same family. And even within the same species uh, of, the, of the plant or, uh, and or the, the, the different parts of the plants can have the different properties um, uh, for, um, for, in, for hot and warm uh, or cold. And examples are from uh, coconut. The coconut meat, uh, which is actually the solid endosperm uh, part of the, the fruit, is, uh, has a warm, uh, the neutral uh, property. But the coconut milk, which is uh, the liquid uh, endosperm part of the, the, the fruit, um, uh, has a warm property. So um, the coconut milk uh, is uh, kind of um, pretty common uh, the use not only to put into other cuisine but also put into some of the the, the cold sweets and um, the the in some ice um, uh, sweets and that is uh, have kind of a, a, a balance effect for um, uh, for the this uh, the cold soup and um, it has a, a different property. Also, um, even for the very same thing, if you prepare a, a, in a different way, you can make the, the cold hard property change. And one of the uh, very famous example is the tea. And if you make the fresh tea um, uh, and, and to uh, uh, highly uh, fully oxidized or not, uh, which means it's uh, um, fully uh, fermented or not, then it's a uh, uh, in green tea, that is considered to have a sweet and cold property, and it's basically unwilted and uh, uh, an oxidized um, kind of tea. But if you um, put into uh, a semi-fermented uh, tea, like oolong tea, then it will become, uh, the cold effect will become uh, uh, less and less. So it will become a neutral or cool um, uh, um, property. And if it's a uh, fully um, oxidated or um, fully fermented, which are the black teas, and basically it will have a warm property. And um, so for the same tea, you can have a different effects. And so again, if you have, if you are um, uh, a warm person or a cold person, your 
um, I will recommend you to drink um, uh, the tea based on your uh, own uh, body temperature. Uh, otherwise, you ha you will have some imbalance for for uh, your body. I already uh, gave you some of the concept about uh, you have to keep your um, body in balance and uh, uh, and actually this kind of uh, keeping in balance is a, a major concept for um, our uh, uh, food culture and because in many ways uh, when we eat something we will try to neutralize the effect for yin and yang and um, uh, this is an example from um, a durian. Uh, durian is uh, so-called the king of the fruit, and it's uh, considered to be a, a have a, a strong heart property, and um, with this uh, indescribable smell. It's really smellish, and uh, um, and in some of the public area, uh, you can be fined if you uh, bring the the durian. Um, well, not be fine, and it's permitted, uh, prohibited, uh, um, in in some area. But because of um, this very strong heart property, when you eat durian, uh, if you eat a lot, it is highly recommended to um, eat something to balance it. And it's true. And in in local um, area in the Southeast Asia, after you eat uh, some of the durian, it's uh, very common to eat this uh, purple um, mango sting. And uh, the mango thing was said to uh, is to be the uh, the queen of the fruit, and it has a uh, a cold property. So once you eat a lot of durian, you will accumulate too much heat in your body. So it's very good to have this um, uh, mango thing to reduce the interior heat. And um, although I think um, many people just eat it this way, they don't really un understand what's going on. But it's a uh, it's the way we we eat it. We we will try to balance out um, the things in um, uh, in in our own body. So uh, in many ways, we we will probably do those kind of balancing um, behavior uh, uh, subconsciously because we we um, we don't really need to do that because we are so used to it. And um, but. That is uh, have some purpose on uh, on behind the back, and here is one of the example. Uh, when uh, during the winter we uh, prepare this hot tub, and uh, many people like to um, have this um, uh, uh, spicy and hot um, uh, hot tub things, and uh, and in those good ingredient we'll see um, we put several things inside to balance out the effect because this is already a, a hot soup and uh, we'll, uh, we uh, very popular we'll put the, the, the Ghanaian um, chrysanthemum, the tonghao or the napa cabbage or the um, uh, enoki mushroom and also the tofu and those com uh, ingredients are cold or cool uh, property and so it will balance out if you eat a lot of too spicy things and um, so it is good to put those things inside and of course we we didn't actually put it on a purpose uh, because we want to balance that and because but it is in our culture that we are it's so uh, we are so used to uh, prepare those things in the hot tub but why not else but so this is has some a uh, purpose on, on, on the back I think this is quite interesting it's we can uh, say it's uh, uh, um, it's ancestral intelligence in in a sense. I will give you um, uh, the last example is from um, uh, very practical is uh, to um, the fruit or cold treatment, and uh, in fact the the fruit can be categorized into two different kind of fruit if you really understand what what I was talking about. And uh, they are so-called a cold fruit and a hot fruit. Although the symptom, uh, or you might feel, okay, this is the same fruit. It's, you are having a fruit. But actually, the symptoms are a little bit different. Uh, if you have a cold fruit, um, you will ha uh, likely have a stop nose and sneezing, coughing, and chilling feels, and um, a little bit less f uh, fever. Um, um, usually, it will be not that high uh, fever. And in a hot fruit, uh, you will have a very high fever and sore throat 
and coughing a lot. So because the, the different property of the fruit, you should have a different treatment. And for to treat the cold fruit, it will be um it, it will be better to uh have some some kind of like ginger drinks and with brown sugar. And so that is to balance the cold fruit. And if you have a hot fruit, um then you can have some of the uh, like the mint tea or the quinsensum tea and watermelon juice to in, to uh reduce uh your yang uh, in your body. And so if you have a cold fruit, do not eat the cold things like the tangerine or pear. And if you have hot fruit, it's not good to have a ginger drink because it will be overheated. And so I think this is a very practical uh, um, uh, use. I think uh, next time you have, uh, have a fruit, uh, try to drink the, the proper one. And there are several other drinks that um, can uh, be treated uh, in coughing. And here are the two examples, and the sugar cane tea and the citrus tea. And um, both of them um, have a little bit uh, cooler um, property. So it is uh, suggest to drink in hot and, um, and sometimes with ginger. So it can uh, uh, overcome the, uh, the, the colder property, although it can treat the coughing. But it is a kind of cold drink, and so it is better to drink in hot uh, temperature. So, um, so uh, we have been talking uh, quite um, some introduction for the yin and yang implants, and the take home message uh, are basically uh, I want you to know that plants have different properties of um, for its nature. And also, uh, the, the food nature can be changed due to the different process and preparation, uh, preparation uh, different preparations. And it is uh, very good for you to know your own body um, properties and also incorporate those, um, uh, your, your food in, in your daily life and to, to bring you the balance and to bring the yin and yang in harmony. So that is uh, all for the lecture.